Is this all because it's just a snowy day and got nothing, but you can't go, <laughs> you can't mow the lawn or what? Were you told there was going to be hot, hot apple pie? Lunch. Were you lied to? No, I don't think so. The way it should be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you all introduce yourselves? Good idea. Could you be me and I'll be you? Whatever you want. Okay, no. Harry Chadwick. David Moskin. John Allen. Lisa Smith Green, tenant rep. Rich Witness. Pamela Rogers. And? Pardon? What is your name? Oh, my name is Ann Parker. Ann Parker, thank you for coming. It's good to see folks showing up. Is this being recorded? Yes. Okay. Where's Alex? Oh, he's over there somewhere. Yes, so this John Allen is your new chair, our new chairman. I'm the new governor's appointee to the board, for what that's worth. Okay, the first order of business is topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. And the only thing I have in that category is some information I got from Evelyn Masea at the... Um, Housing Authority in Boston, and I forwarded it to all the uh, commissioners. What it does is it tells the, everybody what the criteria are for changing an executive director should the board ever get to the point where it wants to do that. So um, that's the only item I have there. John? Yes. Um, so I, if I can make a correction on the agenda too, there's um, there's a agenda item about um, people signing for the checks, authorized check signers. We do need to vote on that, so we just need to put a V there. And then I just, I have a piece, just an additional piece of board correspondence from the Belchertown Housing Authority to the board. Right, we'll, we'll get but to that's that. just correspondence. We'll get to that in a minute. And where would you like the board signing? Use the microphone. How's that? Can you hear me now? A little closer. Can you hear? Can you hear? So you have to talk really loud. Okay. Really loud. Okay. Um, Pamela, where would you like that vote on the signers? So that's on number five under um, six commissioners' discussions. Right here. It's just that it's a vote. A V. It's a, a voting v. agenda item. <laughs> okay. You got that? All right. Uh, approval of minutes not previously approved. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to take them in the order in which we have to pass them, starting with November 22nd. So there's a motion to take the minutes? Individually. Individually. Is there a second? I'll second that. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Go ahead and discuss. Um, we the first should be doing one. roll call votes. Why? Because we don't know who voted to hear it individually and who did not. Does it make any difference if the majority voted for it? We need to have a record in the minutes of who voted for what. In yes. other words, you would like to have a roll call vote. <clears throat> I think it's appropriate. Then just ask for it, please. Roll call vote. Okay, roll call vote, please. Harry? Harry Chadwick, yes. David Moskin, yes. John Allen, <clears throat> yes. Risa Smith-Fried, yes. Yes. That's what this is. Um, okay, and speaking of uh, taking roll call votes, the first thing on the November 22nd minutes is that meeting was held virtually, and virtual meetings must have roll call votes. We don't have that. We have a uh, motion made by John Allen to discuss governor appointment, vote three to one. The uh, no vote was uh, our, our tenant rep, Risa, but we have to identify, because this was a virtual meeting, uh, roll call votes. So that needs to be corrected on the November 22nd meeting. 
So do, do you have the, the people who voted yes so we can correct the minutes? Well, I watched the uh, video again last night. So three of us voted yes and Risa voted no. So it was Chadwick yes, Alan yes, and... Um, Richie Whitkiss yes. Richie Whitkiss yes, okay. Yeah, John Allen had not, I mean, uh, Dave Moskin had not joined the board yet. Is that sufficient to collect that minute? If they put that in, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Um, we should put a vote on this. The uh, mm -hmm. third item, when we were trying to add something to the agenda, never got acted on. Uh, you had made a motion, Mr. Chairman, to have the board vote on hybrid or virtual meetings at the chair's choice of when the board can vote. I seconded that. There was discussion, but uh, Executive Director Rogers told us this item should not be here. It wasn't anticipated 48 hours uh, at the end of that paragraph. Uh, the chair at the time, uh, Richard Whitkiss, chose to move on without a vote of that virtual hybrid meeting discussion. I don't know what we do about that, but uh, that was not acted on at that meeting. Uh, should we just note the uh, comment on the uh, agenda? That it wasn't acted on? Yes. Or t tell us what to do to remedy it so we can vote on it. I don't know. I don't know. So uh, respectfully, what would happen is, so that one is, it's out of order that we should have <clears throat> said, it's not gonna, he's not going to forward it or take a, take a roll call vote. But you can't correct the motion. We can update, we can amend the minutes to what you're requesting about the vote of who did what, mm -hmm. but we can't change the minutes to add something that didn't happen. So we just know going forward, don't let that happen again. So we'll amend the minutes, is that okay, Mr. Shepard? That's fine with me. Okay, next. <clears throat> That's all I saw on that. I would move to accept the minutes of Tuesday, November 22nd, as amended. Is there a second? <clears throat> All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have to abstain having not been present. That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay, so it was unanimous among those present. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, nay. What, what are we voting? We're voting to accept the minutes with your correction. November 22nd? Yes. We just, Aye. 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 Okay, and one abstention. Next. Okay, the Tuesday, December 20th meeting that did not happen because we did not have a quorum. But in looking at the uh, tape last evening, there are six and a half minutes of discussion that have been recorded and went out to the public in the media uh, with respect to not having a quorum, couldn't have a meeting. But I want it noted that in that six and a half minutes, the first couple of minutes, Pamela Rogers states that two commissioners did not participate because of misinformation. That is not factual. The information that we received that then became part of the open meeting law complaint by a fellow commissioner um, indicated that that was misinformation. That is not true because as of Friday, December 16th, we were informed there was no contract. So there was no misinformation. So I need to have that recorded somewhere even though we didn't have a meeting and there was no quorum, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Shadbrook, it'll be recorded in this meeting now. Is then, that sufficient? That's fine. Okay. Thanks. Can we move on to the next one then? Mm -hmm. that's, that's incorrect. That's incorrect. We have discussion. Why is that incorrect? Because that it, it was misinformation. That's not what the letter said. Well, but, right, but you're saying that I said We're taking Mr. Before. Chadwick's comments mm -hmm. and accepting them as comments. As part of this meeting. As far, and it's yep. being recorded on okay. this meeting. Okay? Sure. All right. Next. <clears throat> Um, okay, Tuesday, December, well, Tuesday, December 27th. Let me see, I have a number of things here. <clears throat> uh, again, watching the uh, broadcast last evening. Um, 
that's okay. That's just for my notes. Um, no, I have comments that I will make later on in the meeting that pertain to this meeting, but I will approve or make a motion to approve the December 27th minutes as they have been presented. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, I'll call for vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Next. I have nothing on the Tuesday special meeting, January 10th, unless anybody else did. January 10th. 10th. Okay. That was the discussion of the open meeting right. law complaint. I don't have anything on that. I don't know if you do. I move we accept the minutes of January 10th. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, is there any discussion? Aye. Oh, okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. <clears throat> All right. Any others? And then we had uh, the last meeting, Tuesday, January 31st. Uh, things to discuss further on in the meeting, however, I didn't see anything that is not accurate on the, third, on the Tuesday, January 31st meeting. Is there a motion then to accept those minutes? I can make that motion to accept them. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, signify aye. saying aye. 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 Uh, it's unanimous. Any others? That's the all, that's all the minutes. Okay. We'll move right ahead then to the board correspondent, Pamela. So I do have, um, it's in the packet. There is um, just, there's some uh, NARO newsletter. This was, uh, I don't believe you got it on the in the PDF, but it is in the board packet itself. This is just for informational purposes, and it does have information, <coughs> excuse me, about the new um, housing um, subsidies, including um, the upcoming conference for April 2nd and through 4th. Um, additionally, there is the letter that came in um, late last week from uh, the Department of Housing, <coughs> uh, retroactively approving the management agreement from the Department of Housing. So there is a valid agreement between the Belchertown House, excuse me, the Amherst Housing Authority and the Hadley Housing Authority from day one with the management agreement. And then just today I have for you, um, Reese, could you pass down? There's a letter from the chairperson at the Belchertown Housing Authority concerning some information that a few commissioners here have also re received. So there was, um, that outlines the issue um, and it, it will advise you of the, um, the steps that the Belchertown Housing Authority took in, in um, looking into that information, uh, that incident. And that's all I have under board correspondence. Thank you. You're welcome. Any comments? Yes, I do. So can we have a few minutes since we just read this? Or no, I don't want to take leader? this up today. It, we just got it, so I'm not going to take the board's time. We just received it. Then can we please put this on the agenda for next meeting? Of course. Okay. We have to be cautious about executive, yes. sec, uh, executive session discussion in another uh, housing authority. I think I don't know how to... Uh, well, actually, we should be fine with it because they've sent the letter to the Board of Commissioners, and uh, this is now public. That, that right? will that will be that will be public knowledge. The, oh, okay. the executive session minutes have not been released yet, right. but they will be um, once it's approved. Board of yeah. okay. Board of Commissioner Correspondence is public. Very good. Uh, under most everything, there's a few small exceptions, and this is not an exception. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, moving ahead to the executive uh, director reports, financials. Unpaid invoices and warrant reports. Is there anything out of the ordinary? 
Yep, so this, um, John, you and I had talked about, uh, Carrie has a binder for this month that has um, unpaid invoices that would need approval from the board for signature prior to, <coughs> we have not cut the checks, we have not paid the bills of those, it's that blue binder. Okay. And then we have the outstanding warrant reports and I'm not, from previous months that I'm not sure how you want to deal with those. All right. The unpaid invoices, that'll come up when we deal with the check signing and so on and so forth. And I... No, it still would be board, it, it store, still would be board approval. So we are, it's, we're at a disadvantage because we don't have a treasurer and we don't... Um, All right. Let me just say it again. Mm -hmm. We'll bring that up when we get down further in the agenda. So you're going to table it down. Understood. Okay. Yep. All right. Anything else? And we, you're correct, we don't have a treasurer, so there's no <coughs> treasurer report? Is well, uh, the tre so the treasurer's report is actually, so it says treasurer, but it's actually the report from our fee accountant. This is from Gary DePace. All right, then we should correct that for the next... Um, well, he uses the term treasurer. Well, yes. I'm the chairman. Okay. And for the next <coughs> agenda, mm -hmm. we should put that down as <coughs> DePace's report. Okay, we could, I can... Add. Probably accounting financials. Would you do that? I'm not sure he wants his name. <coughs> on it. Well, he's going to have his name on it. Okay, we can just talk. You don't have to yell at me. Please. I'm not yelling at you. You actually are. Please. How many times do I have to tell you that we're going to have Gary DePace's report noted in the minutes in in the agenda? Okay. Okay. So I'll talk that over with Gary DePace, mm -hmm. and then I'll I'll advise. I'll have him contact you. How about if I call him? You go right ahead. He'd love to talk to you. Okay. This is an open meeting issue. It is. It is, but he's also a contractor. And it doesn't matter. You can talk to Gary if He's about going it. to be a contractor. He's right, subject, if he's going to be your contractor. He's subject to the open meeting law. <coughs> I'm in charge of enforcing that. Okay. Okay? Absolutely. Mr. Chair, can I ask a question? Please. So um, how would the board be made aware if there was any unusual expenses or in inflows, I guess? So if you had a remarkable occurrence and it, you had to draw money from reserves or somewhere else, uh, would Gary DePace let us know or your treasurer or how, how would we find out if anything big happened in the last four weeks? So a transfer from reserves to um, into the revolving account there would be a board vote for that. You, would, you folks would have to approve okay. that. But then on the warrant reports that you get, it tells you where the money is flowing, and then each month you have the opportunity to question where those are going. And then also Gary DePace is semi -aud is auditing these things when he's, because Gary inputs all the information and pays the bills. But then if there's anything out of the ordinary, Gary would come to the board and say, this is out of the ordinary. And he has done that in the past with many of the housing authorities that he works for. He's highly professional. Okay. okay. This makes all the more sense to put a line item in the agenda that's the Gary DePace um, report. Okay? And that will be the place for him to bring those that question to the board. Okay, but you have a staff uh, accountant, right? Uh, no. We Is that go. this? You, mm -hmm. That's you, right? Yeah. So she would be aware also uh, if a tree but, fell on a unit and you had to come up with no. 10, 10. Oh, yeah, we have, we're the ones that have all that information. Absolutely. Right. But it would be better for the board to receive the information from the paid fee accountant. Okay. Gary would not He'll attend it. every meeting. He will not. He doesn't have to attend the meeting. Okay. I don't really care who presents the information. Right. Well, I do. Okay. But how would he? The fee accountant how would he? has superiority over the local um, has no, authority he, he, account. He doesn't. He doesn't. I, I don't know why you see it that way, because mm -hmm. the money is in their pocket, in our, their hands, our hands. Mm -hmm. So it should come from someone that we're working with to tell us that tree fell down last night, crushed apartment number 12. We had to come up with 20 grand fast to put somebody in a hotel, or I don't know. Yes. I could just see a short-term kind of emergency reporting and I'll, I'll take that news from anybody who's at the meeting, basically. If it's an emergency, that's one thing. Yeah. Harry, do you have any thoughts on this? No. Um, I do. Thank you, Harry. The thought I, I have on it is if you are going to insist <laughs> on special reports that are not in the norm from Gary uh, DePace, you're going to have to pay his hourly fee 
because it's not within his contract to have to keep coming here or spend hours on the phone with the chair or whoever. <coughs> he has a scope of responsibility uh -huh. for which he's accountable under contract. Right, and right, if we right. expand that scope, we'll have to pay for it. So right now he gives you a monthly report? Yep, it's this, this, these treasury reports and then also the, the backup um, balance sheet and operating your general ledgers. He's the, Gary is. These come from Gary DePace, and he signs off on them. Yeah, it, it, he's the one that provides this to Gary. <clears throat> okay, this but is he, from his software. But he system. gets that information from our treasurer, right? Well, he right because Gary feeds it into our software system, that which is then uploaded um, to Gary. Gary puts it in the correct place, okay. and and then like the <clears throat> quarterly report, which will be re, we have a quarterly report this this month. Gary DePace has pre present. Uh, excuse me prepared that report and then that will go to DHCD so after so Gary's audited it and then DHCD is finance is going okay. to be looking at it too All right. after you folks approve and it. Pam I'll be honest with you and be patient with me for a second John I have no idea what can go wrong at a local housing authority with money mm -hmm. um, somebody forgot to record or bring an uh, invoice in for a lawnmower repair and all of a sudden there's a imbalance so uh, I, I have to learn about uh, how yeah. mistakes are made or what to watch out for. So there is information. I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. mean to cut you off. No, no, I just said please help us learn oh, absolutely. Uh, how the um, checks and balances work. And is, then the, does it, that report that you just showed get to the, the commissioners? Yes, yep. yeah. this, is the, this is part of the, the, the treasurer's report. It's yeah. in there. And if I can just further, David, yeah. under the Mass Narrow, that newsletter I sent you to, yeah. or is providing you, it has some board training classes too, and yeah. there is financial training that's coming up for specifically for board okay. members and they will they do give you that those tips on what to look at in the monthly reporting to have financial oversight of the agency to make okay. sure everything's it's correct. extremely <laughs> valuable to take the additional board trainings for mass narrow because then a lot of these back and forth that that frustrate me are yeah. addressed in those trainings okay that's different than Mel King right that's uh, oh way different yeah yeah okay. Mel King is specifically for for residents oh, so, yeah. you know things happen like i used to look after a large bearing plant out in michigan believe it or not and one day we realized we do inventory uh, once a year and that's during hunting season because half the guys call in sick so uh we noticed one year that a whole lot of copper tubing worth thousands and thousands of dollars had disappeared and that really didn't show up anywhere because we weren't really watching the co copper tubing inventory it's used for strange stuff so I'm not clever enough to know how people take advantage of systems. Yeah. So I need to learn about how the checks and balances are here for a housing authority. Uh, would you like to be recognized? Yes. That's okay. why I raised my hand. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, riding on those coattails of that lovely story, um, what I have learned from taking these trainings for board for you know, regular board members, is that the checks and balances and auditing process from DHCD is so comprehensive. The only thing you could possibly steal if you were an executive director or a staff member of a housing authority. Or a, or a commissioner. Or a commissioner. Yeah, yeah. Is laundry money, but only if you're the one that takes it out of the washing okay. machine. Thank you, Risa. Thanks. That's helpful. Hey, um, so Wick I'm on the... Mr. Wickes, do you have anything on this topic? No. Okay. So the PVTA, which I'm on their advisory board, you know, with 50-something yeah. million dollar budget, uh, they hire an external auditor every year. Yeah. And it takes weeks, mm -hmm. and they're very, very, very careful. So yeah. we sit through that, and there's rarely any significant questions of any kind. So I'm not too worried about it. Exactly. You know? yeah. And DHCD requires every step of the software, like... Carrie has to enter figures into the co uh, software, into the fields for financials. It is immediately populates all the other software programming that DHCD uses. Okay. And what the head of IT told me, for the head of IT of DHCD says, if your accountant puts in a figure, I get it and I can tell there's something you know, going on before she even realizes it. He has actually called Amherst and told them they had a decimal out of place. Good to hear. In 15 minutes after they did it. 
Good to hear. Be careful Not with those decimal carefully. points. Not yeah. how It's, it's okay. monitored. Thank you, Reese. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Any further discussion on that topic? Any further discussion on that topic? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to the quarterly reports. Quarterly budget report. So I'm a, I'm a little confused. Are we not going to approve unpaid invoices or warrant reports for the past three, four months? I think we're moving it down further in the agenda. I think that was. So, Pamela, uh, it's your report here, the yep. quarterly budget report is ready. Yep. So on, on this one, we have a couple of them. Um, Carrie, jump in whenever. <laughs> True. Gary help present these. We have a, the top of it is a modernization report. So it's kind of a strange looking packet. But a modernization is the capital project. So again, this is the money that the special the money on top of um, so it will say on the top Department of Housing and Community Development quarterly <coughs> consolidated modernization report. <coughs> And those are these are the extra funds that the, that the um, housing authority gets through the capital projects. So this is a reporting of where these funds are being used. Um, so and again, DHCD holds on to these funds until the project is underway and until um, invoices are are submitted. And when an invoice is submitted. It goes through the proper channels to be approved, and then DHCD releases the money to be paid. It does not come into our account yeah, prior we, to that. I think we understand that. Is okay. there anything out of the ordinary here? There's not. Nope. So this is just the, the uh, Carrie, did you have anything out of the ordinary that you wanted to point out? No. Okay. Well, let's, let's move right ahead to uh, write-offs. I'm not sure what that no, means. No, I'm sorry. I'm so, so we do need board approval to submit this to the Department of Housing. Oh, okay. So the, um, may I ask a question? So the projects get a number, and is there a, uh, I haven't gotten through everything yet, I have to admit. Is there a description of the project in English somewhere? Other than just the project number and the dollar amount? Not on, not on this one. Mary, are you aware of the, um, the top two? The bottom one is the, um, this project number 117082 is the window project that is coming up. That's Windows, okay. Yep, that's Windows. And that we're using both our capital money and then CPA money from the town of Hadley. So that 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 project is about to stop their start. They're going out to bid, and bids are accepted by, um, are due by March 8th. Okay, thank you. So we're you. getting close on the And the two above that, 075? Yeah, the first one was a reasonable accommodation um, for a bathroom. Okay. Um, and then the second one down it was we um, we took out all the carpet in the 705s and put down VCT tile on all the units. And, and for, it took forty-five thousand dollars. Yep. That couldn't be right. No, you'd, you'd be surprised. Uh, unfortunately, this is the type of thing that it was half the units. We, we most of the time we well we always do it at turnover. So it was the units that were left, the people that were occupied. One unit? No, I think it was six units left. Oh, so six units cost. Right. So, and a company came in to occupied units and went into in each unit or in each room, emptied the room, took out the carpet, put VCT tile down. Pamela, from your experience, is that what it cost to re re that floor was, a unit? Un was unfortunately, when we go through projects, when we when we're able to, when it's a smaller project and either our maintenance staff does it or we hire locally, uh -huh. we save so much money. But when the state gets a hold of a project, uh -huh. it's that six hundred dollar toilet syndrome mm -hmm. where you're we're paying, believe it or not, a designer and architects. It, it's outrageous. Okay, thank you. Anything else on this particular subject? Do you have anything more? No, just that we do need a, a, a separate board vote for the modernization um, I'll report. I'll make a motion to approve the modernization. All uh, second. Expenses. There's a motion that has uh, been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That's unanimous. <coughs> 
anything else? Um, and then the second one would be, the second vote would be the quarterly budget for these two programs, 667 and 705. And, and again, Carrie, did you have anything? No. There's nothing out of the ordinary there. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the quarterly budget for modernization. Uh, not for modernization. Oh, I'm sorry, so. quarterly budget for 665 and uh, 667 and 705. Is there a second? Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, the motion is on the table. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please aye. signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. I hear two ayes. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to catch up here. So that is the Treasury Report of December 31st. Yep. Where it, it breaks up. The uh, 667 and 705 budgets. It says okay. the quarterly one. And it says at the top, um, David, it says 400 <coughs> 1. Yes, I see that right. Thank you. I have two votes for the motion. I'll, uh, I'll vote yes. That's three. Mr. Chadwick? Um, I'm voting no. Okay. Um, because I went back to the <clears throat> minutes of December 27th. This is where I had a highlight. <coughs> that I resigned as the treasurer of the Board of Commissioners um, and that I would not vote on any warrants, treasury reports, until the valid contract was produced. And uh, so I'm adhering to that. I'm voting no. Okay, there's one no <coughs> vote and three yeses. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. There is a valid contract at this point. And it was the board was presented with well, it. Well, in your opinion, there's a valid contract. Actually, in DHCD, I just presented you with the letter that you got from the Department of Health. It's not signed by anyone. It's except it's full. It, it, okay. I, listen, let's not get in an argument during a public meeting. Here. The, the, in a public <coughs> meeting, I'm stating that the Department of Housing sent you directly a letter that said it is an approved management agreement. I got that. Right. So that's what it. We have an approved management agreement, and right now you're not dealing in good faith with that contract. You're not. You're trying to well, represent that there is, this there is coming up under this topic. Because you're the, you're allowing a board member to say he's not going to do his fiduciary responsibility as a he board member. I take exception to that fiduciary duty responsibility. It is. That's what you're No, it's your not. Piece. Wait a minute. It is. Wait a minute. This no, is, it is not. This is no, about it. Minute. I'm I'm a member of the board, sir. No, you're I not. I actually am. If you read your training, the chair, no, the executive not. director is a member of the board. No, you're the secretary of the board. No, I'm the ex officio of the board. I'm your expert. And That's you what I am. All right. And I serve as the secretary. <coughs> I'm a member of the board. And you're misrepresenting, again, there is a valid contract between Amherst and Hadley. No. John, you sent me the email last night. Of course saying. I did. And I sent you, in good faith, to every board member. And I disagree with DHCD's characterization. DHCD is the authority. I don't care. She is, I don't agree with her. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Please. Since this went down to the DHCD, okay, in the cover letter that came back, it said that uh, the original packet of information was misplaced. My question would be, whatever was sent to the DHCD back in July of 2020, we should have kept a copy of it and pre present a copy. Setting that aside, further we needed additional time to collect necessary documentation. This is what comes back from the DHCD with the housing authority, with the DHCD signature. But when this look, went down, look what's blank. we could have very easily had Michael Burkhardt sign, Richard Whitka sign, then I would say we have a contract. We don't have a contract in my opinion. So I am not voting on any warrants, treasury report or anything, because this, they had more information. You could have sent down more signatures, and we would have had a contract. So, so if we have no I contract, then I think we should end the meeting. Because why is the Amherst Housing Authority performing? We haven't had a contract for three years. You do have a contract, and you're, mis you're misinformed. No. Right. You're no. misinformed. You're, and I'm tired of you telling me I'm misinformed. And I'm tired of you telling me something shady. That's going wonderful. On. Please, I'm tired please, of it. Please Good. interrupt. Yeah. Please. Okay. Right Some of us are elected. elected. Yes. And How many of you are elected? Three of us. And one of us is appointed by the governor. He's right here. Don't say that. <laughs> that All right. <laughs> 
Let's keep our voices down, boys. There you go. Okay, where are we? Okay, I'll be okay. Are you done with the quarterly report, Pamela? We need a approval. <laughs> you had, a, I think, three votes to approve, right? Yes. Yeah, you passed it. it it's you passed. passed it. What about write-offs? What does that mean? Gary, you want to take that? Write-offs? The write-offs are request write-offs. Are you asking Harry? Oh, no, she had, yeah, she had, it's in your board packet. Go ahead. Sorry. So um, we only have two, we have two um, prior tenants that are no longer with us. They have either passed away or moved on to um, somewhere else that owe us money. Um, we have exhausted our means of having them pay us. So we're going to be right, we would like to write them off of our TAR account. All right. it, what's, what's the dollar amount, please? It's in your board packet. The total, well, tell me just for the record. total amount is $1,773. Okay. Um, Where, which, which, what's the label of that uh, packet or that? Um, it says the write-off write -off request, Hadley Housing Authority write-off request. So it's not the unit vacancy report. No. Yeah. Carrie, I understand. I asked you just so, for the record. It's being recorded. Yes. Okay. All right. All in favor of the suggestion that we write off seventeen hundred dollars more or less? David, do you want this one? Or is there a motion? I'm sorry. Is there a motion to uh, write off the seventeen hundred dollars more I'll, or less? I'll make the motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Harry? No. Okay. It's the motion passes though. <coughs> okay. Um, property manager's report, unit vacancy report. Yep. Is, is there any difference between this month and last month that we should talk about, or is it just normal? It's just the normal. Okay. The then let's move right on to the next thing. Tenant <coughs> account receivable report. Is that normal? There were always going to be receivable. That's normal as well. Okay. Do you want a motion to accept the property manager's report? Um, those ones you don't have to vote on. They're just informational. I'm for asking oversight. the board if they would like okay. to vote on. Okay. Would you like to vote on that or just go on to the next item? Okay. Let's move on to the next item. Facilities, uh, um, capital, and work orders. Go ahead, Pamela. So the, the capital, so I do have the work order report, and that's just showing you the work orders what is it, that have been completed um, from the beginning of January, excuse me, yeah, January through, we have a January report and uh, a February report, just showing you what the maintenance staff has been doing. Um, and I did just also want to point out, um, so there's a couple pages of work orders too, that this is just for the Hadley Housing Authority and that we have five maintenance men and the five maintenance men have an, an, a large number of work orders at Belchertown and Amherst as well. Um, and again, put in a shameless plug for our maintenance staff. They've done, they do a great job. Um, several weeks ago, there was a freeze um, throughout the Commonwealth and the maintenance staff worked over the weekend and they, on Saturday of that weekend, they worked 20 hours, four of the guys, they said five, four of the guys um, worked for 20 hours straight with no heat calls, frozen pipes, and taking care of the residents of the housing authorities. So just wanted to point that out. And the redacted? Uh... That would be personal information about the, um, the tenant, the tenant's name or the unit number. So we're going to filter it better next time so that because it, we can't disclose that information of who the uh, the unit number or the tenant's name. Right. Any further comments on the uh, uh, facilities report? Hearing none, we'll move ahead to the policy question, reasonable accommodation policy. And Pamela, correct me if I'm wrong. This is a uh, pro forma uh, 
um, yes. from DHCV, mm -hmm. and if the board were to approve it now, and I'm not sure what they're going to do, but uh, it could be accepted and then modified at some point in the future. That is correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. So it is uh, in in its form. It is absolutely just a template, um, and we just filled in the information pertaining to Hadley Hadley's <coughs> information. Okay. But other than that, and um, it is a required policy at this time. And you, uh, we should vote on it. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Please. I'll uh, accept a motion to accept the reasonable accommodation policy as presented. I'll second that. Yeah, I haven't got a first yet, have I? I thought you just did it yourself. I'll first it then. All right, is there a second? I'll second. All right, I have a first and a second, and uh, the motion is now on the table. How about we accept it with the proviso that if any changes uh, crop up in the future, we modify it to the court for those changes. That's your discussion? Right. Yes, that's my discussion. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Pamela, you've been through this and it's worked for all three of your housing authorities? It is, yep. And it follows the, mm -hmm. um, the information that's in the state regulations and that's also in the lease on how we approve reasonable accommodations. So nothing's ever happened in the real world that's uh, put any of this into question or found this to be uh, too weak to solve the problem. We can always no. modify in the future if it turns out yeah. to be weak. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it's good tomorrow. to hear that it's been working. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, now I'm more comfortable approving okay. it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay? That's unanimous. And the rent collection policy, which goes back quite a few years, as I recall. Uh, yes, the current one on, is 2006 from the Hadley Board of Commissioners. Okay. Now, um, I, it was in your packet. Has everyone had a chance to read it? I have not. The rent collection right. policy. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. That we take the rent collection policy under advisement and uh, um, give it to the financial subcommittee, which we'll come to in a minute, for discussion. Or either that or have Risa and uh, maybe Richard uh, look at the policy and uh, make a recommendation at our next meeting. Okay. What's your preference? Yeah. Fine. Uh, with, with the ladder? Speak up the ladder. Yeah. Okay, Richard. You and Richard? Yep. Okay. Great. You willing to do that? All right. So at the next meeting, you'll bring a, uh, an update if necessary. Okay. Mm -hmm. To the rent collection policy. All right. Commissioners' discussion. Election of commissioners, officers, vice chair, or treasurer. Um, um, what's the board's feeling on the, <coughs> the need to have a vice chair? I hear. The a deafening silence. How about a uh, treasurer? We need a treasurer for sure. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, do you have a? Does DHCDs re require or that mm -hmm. uh, a vice chair and a treasurer are in no, place? No, they do not require a vice chair, but it makes no difference to me at all. Okay. A treasurer is required by our bylaws. Within 30 days of the resignation or removal. Okay. So we are in violation of our own bylaws at this point. Okay. So let's take them one at a time. Um, how does the board feel about appointing a treasurer? I agree we need one. I think we should have one. I think we should yeah. have one. There's three. No, I mean, we have to have one. Then just Okay, Richard? Yes. Okay. Now, we just need a name. Who is going to be the pigeon? I still nominate Harry Chadwick. I'll second him. I'll decline that at this time. All right. Uh, I'll nominate uh, David Moskin. I, I don't feel most qualified. I'd like to make a suggestion that Harry serves as the treasurer and, and until the point where we are all satisfied that our uh, management contract with the Amherst Housing Authority is in place that Harry just um, uh, puts up with the lack of a contract and goes through the motions in a good way, a meaningful way, of the treasurer's duties. 
and at some point in the future we're going to have a satisfactory contract is my projection so in that case we won't have wasted a lot of time with a incompetent treasurer or an unwilling treasurer and um, so Harry I'm just going to ask you to, to, to do the treasurer's duties uh, and if in the future we really <coughs> cannot satisfy ourselves no. that we have a proper management agreement then you can just give up or stop or resign or something but for the time being hang in there while we try to work out the um, the logistics of finalizing this contract or not having a contract but at least we'll get the treasurer's work done you know what I'm saying kind of I'm not saying it very well well, I think you've said it very well, and I'm still not going to be interested. An in acting it. treasurer, kind I'm of. I'm not interested in that at this point. Okay. <coughs> John, would you like to be? Would you? Would no, like I'm no, chairman. No. I'm not going to be treasurer. Okay. I, I'm not going to be treasurer. Yeah. Um, Richard, how would you like to be chairman? No, I would not. You look like a perfect chairman. No, no. You Risa. mean treasurer? Tre uh, tre uh, treasurer. Yes, I do. No. Thank you, uh, Risa. You want to be treasurer? Uh, I'll do it under. Uh, if if Carrie would be willing to teach me, and I can take that further board certification training in finance. <laughs> Will that housing authority then pay for my training in finance? Yes, the housing authority does pay for it, all board members' training. Okay. Absolutely. So uh, I would be willing to take it after I've completed the board of commissioner training for finances. And uh, if Carrie can spend some days with me and teach me the ins and outs. All right. So what I've heard is uh, you might accept it in the future under some conditions. And right now we don't have a uh, We don't have those conditions yet, but uh, uh, that could means you work we don't with have it until treasurer? <coughs> could you take the treasurer until? I mean, because I don't know when the class is scheduled. But yet. I just don't know. Well, Carrie, can you, do you have time to take me on for a couple of days? Because I, I really do not have any background in this kind of finance, and I would have to learn really quick. <clears throat> Thank you, Reese. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, there's a motion. Is there a second? You're, you're, there's a motion to accept the treasurer's position. Uh, let me put, I think it would be better to wait until the conditions are satisfied before we appoint the treasurer. You have to understand you're in violation of your very own bylaws. Fine. I'm in violation of my very own <coughs> bylaws. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Were yes, we in please. violation when we kept the other treasurer on for nine months after she had left the board? Were Lisa? we in violation there? I'm just curious. She wasn't the treasurer. She was a signer on the checks. You were the treasurer. She was not no. the treasurer. No, no, no. She was the treasurer no, was from the May treasurer. of 22. No, she was a signee on the checks. Again, a difference of opinion here on how you look Did at it and how I see it. So, there you go. All right, let's um, <coughs> let's go without a treasurer for the another month and see what happens. <coughs> Thank you. How soon can Thank we you. get the training? I appreciate that. It's up. It, Mass Naro does know, the you training. Would this, you so, would yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's time. Yeah, I know what it is. That's well, I understand it. I think that y'all should vote on whether or not we. We really cannot go more months in violation of our own bylaws. We can't do it. If you want to change the bylaws, fine. But to violate our own by bylaws, I believe, could be actionable. We have a fiduciary well, responsibility. What is the penalty for violating our own bylaws? You don't know? No, I don't know. I thought you agreed to be the treasurer. <laughs> he just she told me no. Oh, I missed that. But you have the whole board should and, vote. Until the, until the conditions. Oh, I missed that. Part. No, I until think the conditions are satisfied. I think you have a first and a second. You should Excuse vote me, on but it. But haven't the bylaws not been updated since the 1960s? They're still applicable. They're 40, 42 years old. Yep, the bylaws still, are 42 years old. So let's look at that first. They're still year. applicable. All right. Um, I sense that we're locked on the treasurer at the time being. Um, May I just say something, John? Please. So I just, if I can just say, so Harry had pointed out that in a previous board meeting there was a first and a second and then no action was taken. So I think you, you have to either 
you, you have to clear this because you have a first and a second. So clear this somehow so that we don't run into that position again. This is so, from a prior meeting that was a first and yeah, a or, second? Yes, that, uh, Harry okay, pointed and, out and that. that meeting adjourned with no action? Correct. So that has nothing to do with this meeting? Harry asked that it didn't happen again. And that's how we were correcting that. So just don't not to let it happen again. It's Robert's Rules of Order. It's a yeah. process. You've got specific things you have to do. All right. What does the board want to do? Harry? Well, was there a motion to make Risa the, the treasurer? I think we can approve Risa um, at the time at which her own conditions have been satisfied. That's what I thought we were arrived at. But is there a motion to that effect? Mind. Don't listen to him. Who's him? Let's go. So Risa has offered to become treasurer at the point where she has taken a training and but then you you satisfied uh, her needs with the uh, treasurer. I, I actually said I would be willing to to serve if voted as treasurer. However, I want assurances that the training and finances for a board of commissioner made you know mm -hmm. board of commissioners that i can get that training through dhcd and that carrie would meet with me and do whatever she needed to do right. evaluate my capacity <laughs> to learn this process whatever that she will teach me how to to okay. be a treasurer and if she agrees and pamela agreed i would be willing to serve as treasurer if <coughs> If the rest of the board of commissioners votes yes. Okay. So how how soon do you think she can do the training that she wants to that needs to do? Well, <coughs> Carrie can meet with her right away. But there's the other one you said. That one is it depends on when the training is through through Masnaro. That's a, a certification training for board of commissioners that I've already asked to be uh, in that certification training. Nobody else on this board has done that certification training. Uh -huh. All right. Oh, it's March third. How does the board feel about the tenant rep yeah. being the treasurer? Is that fair to the other tenants? Yeah, I think so. Well, when we get down to the body of the meeting where we're discussing financial controls and uh, invoices and review and subcommittee of finance and things like that, with items would be reviewed, uh, I have no challenge or difficulty with Risa being the treasurer. Because okay. she's only going to be allowed to pay the bills and sign off on anything after we have reviewed it. Okay. And that's our responsibility as the Board of Commissioners to review the operations of this housing authority. That's okay. Right. That's so I have no problem with Risa being the treasurer. So provided you're we get to review everything that comes before us and then she gets to pay right. the bill. Do you, do you anticipate you'd have to recuse if there was money to be spent on your unit or your building at some point? Or we don't uh, have to, we yes, don't have to worry I about it. I mean, that's a conflict of interest. And, yeah. and by the way, there's a new conflict of interest training oh, yeah. starting in January, and I've already taken that too. Good, good. It's revised conflict of interest training. We should all be taking that. It's yeah. very illuminating. So yes. If there's an action that the board is taking that requires discussion or a vote th where I am impacted singly, right. then I have to recuse myself. Right. Yeah. However, the majority of everything that we do is about doing things for all of the tenants in right. a group. Okay. All right. So is there a motion to make Risa the treasurer. I'll make that motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. And all in favor? Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. That's what the motion carries. May I ask a quick question, though? Please. Since Risa brought up the open, I mean the conflict of interest. The conflict of interest. I took that on January 10th after we had the hearing. Is the one coming up different than the one I just recently I took? I thought you said you took the open meeting law training. Yeah, that's conflict of interest. No, right? open meeting no. law training is completely Oh, wait a minute. Different. I took the conflict of interest for the other board I'm on. Okay. Yeah, but then it was called ethics training. Yes, I'm And sorry. now it's brand new and called conflict of interest. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so 
uh, during the discussion, I heard no interest in a vice chair, but we have appointed a treasurer. Is that correct? Okay. I thought I would be relatively, I'm very familiar with Robert's Rules of Order. I thought I would be much better in a vice chair position, but our needs as a board is to have a treasurer. That's required by bylaws. Having a vice chair is not yet in our bylaws. However, it would be very helpful given the situation that, you know, you travel sometimes and now we have in-person meetings. If you can't be here, then a vice chair, whoever would be, you know, David Boskin would be great as vice chair. So would Rich. But I think we need a vice chair in case something, you know, comes up. All right. Is there a motion to appoint a vice chair to this board? I move we appoint a vice chair. Is there a second to that motion? No second. There's a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Now we have established the position. Who's going to be the vice chair? I'll, I'll, t I'll entertain a motion. I move that Rich be the vice chair. I decline. That's David. <laughs> that, that takes care of that. <laughs> I, I would move Dave Moskin be the vice chair. I would second that. Okay, all right. I don't mind There's doing a motion chair. second. Is there any further discussion? Perfect. Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of making Aye. Dave. Aye. Can I finish? <laughs> Let no, me finish the motion. Thank you, vice chair. <laughs> Please contain yourself. Is there. She's too excited today. She all in favor of making David Moskin the vice chair, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay. I'm the only volunteering is I know John doesn't travel at all. He's in town every day, every It year. doesn't matter. Come on. It's Let's fine. move ahead. Okay. Um, all right. Now, just so you know, uh, as chair, I've appointed a financial subcommittee comprised of uh, David Moskin and uh, Harry Chadwick uh, to meet with Kerry or talk with uh, the fee account or deal with whatever financial issues come to pass, uh, including the approval of invoices from Amherst Housing Authority that are supposed to be paid by the Hadley Housing Authority. Um, and I would, uh, I don't think we need a vote on that. Uh, both have accepted and are willing to go to work. Is that true? Yes. Wouldn't you want Is the treasurer true? on that too? No. So um, then okay. we would have a quarrel. This is up to you. So if you want to appoint a subcommittee, you go I, right I, ahead. That's that's what's on the table right now. Okay. Do you you agree and Harry agrees? All we, set. What we don't have is a definition of what that subcommittee's duties are. I just and we should work it. on that quickly. What that you work with the financial people, yeah, including mm -hmm. Carrie, and the fee accountant, and review the invoices received from Amherst Housing Authority to be paid by Hadley Housing Authority. Before, and then they're turned over to Reese for signature? Yeah, yes. Let's double, no, let's yes, we have to have financial controls. No. no. The, the person who signs should not be the person that approves. Oh, that's what you want. I see what you're saying. No, the, tr the treasurer is the one that, that approves. And then the, the whole no. board approves the, the warrant. And then, yeah, then the signatures are anybody that you put the, on the board. Most. Most housing authorities have all board members as signers on the um, the bank account, but it's the treasurer that helps approve. Carry, the individual departments approve. All right. We're going to do things a little differently here. Right, but we should still follow the law. I don't know why you would have a subcommittee. Plus, there's only so many t hours. This is a 16-hour week authority. They you both accepted. No, it no, sounds like they accepted prior to the meeting, too, so I'm not yeah, sure so how that happened. Like that happened discussion. because I spoke with them personally. Then One there was a quorum a discussion. No, that's not a quorum. Three that's people three are. Quorum. No. You speaking One. to both of them is One. a quorum. I didn't speak to them together. I spoke Doesn't to them matter. One. You spoke to them serially. That's open meeting law no. violation. No, because we're bringing it to the table right now. No. You bring well, it to the table now. Well, so there's an open meeting law violation. There was no deliberation. The, he has deliberation to choose to form a finance sub subcommittee <coughs> is indeed deliberation. No, the chairman it took it on his own initiative. Okay? And you need to be really careful about your dis 
description of open meeting law violations because you filed an open meeting law violation against two of us that in no way even mentions an open meeting law violation. That's up for the in Attorney that General's office to decide, sir, not you. The Attorney General's office <coughs> hasn't contacted me for an investigation, and if they thought there was a violation, they would have done that. So that is you not true. John, I've got an agenda here. Okay. So wait, I'd like to actually hear what Pamela has to say again, if you don't mind. So uh, you said typically all board members will look at the warrant, mm -hmm. ask any questions about the receipts and everything, mm -hmm. and then uh, you usually need two signatures? Or? Yes, the checks are two signatures. So they're, um, and if, if we have all board members, it would be two different signatures signing. Typically the treasurer would sign one of them, <coughs> uh, would be one of the signees. Okay. But say for instance, in Amherst, our treasurer will meet with Carrie ahead of time and go over the accounts so that he can have a fuller understanding before it's presented to the board. Okay, so this is similar to the way the Hadley Select Board works. Exactly. Department by department. Mm -hmm. So you have a head of maintenance, right, mm -hmm. Bruce? He will, he's not here today, right? He's not, no. Yeah. So if he's out buying gasoline or lawnmowers or paying guys or anything, he's got his own payroll? No. Well, no, the, well, the payroll comes under, under Amherst Housing Authority. And then we have, um, we have credits, uh, lines of credit, credit cards, okay. different means of. But he signs off on the number of hours the maintenance guys have Absolutely. worked? Absolutely, yes, correct. Okay, and uh, we just trust him that the hours are correct, right? And then actually Carrie also um, goes through with the work orders and okay. tracks the number of hours for the work orders and then I give final approval on the payroll. But okay, the payroll good. does not come to Hadley. Good. Hadley, because um, all the employees are Amherst Housing Authority employees. Okay, so my limited experience, each department would, in, I, when I was a selectman, each department would basically sign off mm -hmm. and then we would review at the end and <coughs> sign off yeah. for the treasurer to release mm -hmm. the checks yeah. so it's similar here so uh, it is so it gets so mary's mary's depart each department head signs off mm -hmm. carrie signs off i sign off and then the board approves so okay. there's checks and balances all along and then typically the treasurer would meet with carrie or myself and go through the warrant ahead of time and then it's presented to the board for approval so if there was a receipt that said ice cream, $200, and the notation was daughter's birthday party, you would notice that and question yes. it, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So where are we? Financial controls and absence of agreement. Maybe I started that discussion, I don't know. <laughs> so we're here to protect the interests of the tenants. Oh. That's how I look at it. Because there's very little Hadley tax money coming in here. No Hadley None. tax money. What's that? No tax money. None. CPA, I thought you'd take we did, CPA We money. did get a grant, but only when we um, apply for a grant. Right, so I consider it. CPA money significant. Sure. Okay, but not for operations. The, op, the, You're right. the housing capital. authority right. is run partly by the subsidy of the tenant rents right. and partly by DHCD. Right. It's not town money that runs it. Okay. And it's not just Hadley money, it's the whole state. Of course. So I look at that as being, and I'm, I have a special role, believe it or not, if you've read with the governor's mm -hmm. appointee. So I'm supposed to be looking after the interests of the Commonwealth. Correct. So whatever policies the DACD mm -hmm. has put in place, I'm supposed to see if we're aligning with those policies. So I got to get busy reading the policies, which I haven't done yet. But uh, anyway, I, I, I still look at it. You guys disagree that the commissioners are here to look after you. That's yeah, very interesting. We disagree. What, what do you see the role, if you don't mind, Mr. Chair? I don't want to get too distracted, but I'd like to hear what one or two of you think the role of the commissioners is. Okay. Well, okay. Just give us a little hint, please. Mm -hmm. We can just open up a bucket of worms. Okay. Just to go on with the meeting. And okay. Okay. We get to the public comments. If we survive, yeah. Okay. Um, That's fine. Let's keep off the agenda. That's fair enough. Just a minute. 
the suggestion has been made to me, and um, I'd be interested to see how the board members feel about it. Would would you be would it be beneficial for you to meet privately with two board members? No, that's a violation. I wouldn't do it. No, it's not a violation. Yes, it is. It is. It truly is. It of, is. Of what? You make your own rules, aren't you? Um, what, what's it a violation you of? By the rules of whatever you're following. What? You're flying by the seat of your pants here, John. What what what, what violation would that be, please? I gotta tell you. I worked with you for three years. I know what you are. What's the I know how manipulative you are. You got, you're talking to these two guys here. You were recruited by Nevin Smith. You were recruited by Nevin Smith. I don't know if you have a uh, Chadwick was recruited. Let's Richard Whitkiss. Let's, Richard assume, Whitkiss let's assume it was Nevin Smith. He made a, a good decision at that time. But Thank now, you. John Allen's talking for you two. No, nobody speaks for Yes, he, oh, he does. No. You, the good old boys. But I tell you, John Allen's calling John Hyatt in Northampton wanting him to come in and be the liaison here. You're calling that executive director up in South Hadley asking her to come down. Is that working for us? We're happy with what's going on with the Amherst management. There's some reason you guys have an agenda to get rid of them. We want to know what it is. Jane Nevin Smith doesn't like them either. She has her friends, the troublemakers here. You're, but you went, I was there when you violated an open meeting law. When you got up after a meeting, you went and you sat down with the people who were making the big Rob Rebel Riser. Reese has told you, John, you can't do that. You're violating the open meeting laws. What did you say? You said, and I was right there, I'll talk to who I want. Well, who are you? You're representing us. We're, we're the ones that are going to tell you what we want done. You're not telling us what you're going to do. I think it's time you started smartening up, John. You come in here, you're trying to run the whole show. You're talking to Dave. You're talking to Harry. It's the three of you commuting. You've got two other members on the board you're not even looking at to ask a question. You're in a violation of three or four different things since I've been watching these meetings. Mrs. Seattle, you're, you're under the impression that commissioners are not allowed to talk to tenants? Not about um, housing. Not about, no. You're not here to learn the, what a board commissioner the... is. You were recruited by Jane Nevin Smith to come in. For some reason, okay, learn what your job is. If your job is not speaking to John Allen, your job is speaking to the tenants. Oh, so we are supposed to speak During to the tenants. Post the board yes. meeting. Yeah. That's what we want. Good representation. Good. And we're not getting it with John Allen running the show. Oh, he's terrible. And yeah, you guys are taking over as the majority, so the minority doesn't get a chance to tell us that we're what we want. Noreen, we're I think happy John. With Amherst. You guys want to get rid of it for some reason. It'll come up someday. Why? But I'm really surprised. I said, we don't like this good old boy system. Don't, don't, don't assume too that much, Doreen. You're assuming way too much. No, really. I'm just telling you, you Be don't careful. like to hear the truth. That's tough. Yeah, OK, thank you. Why are you telling a tenant to be careful? What's that? Why are you telling a tenant to be careful? Why? Yes. Because she's telling me who who recruited me and who I'm listening to oh, well, and no, who's controlling me. Dave, so please be be careful. Everybody knows everybody's business in Hadley. Well, I've only been in this complex when people here you're That's... supposed to represent and you're not, and we're uh -huh. getting no satisfaction. So you have to come out of the woodwork and let them know what you're doing. So how do we do that? Be honest and be upfront and uh -huh. be your own man and use your own mind and don't let John Allen as a chair, because he's not important, tell you what to do or Harry. That's not, that's that, what believe it or not, Noreen, that's, good that's representation. Not, thank you for your thoughts. That's, that's, well, that's not good. going on. I'm I wish happy I, to talk to you. I wish Come I, and see me sometime. We'll have a private talk. Okay, thank I you I've got a couple of questions <laughs> that I want to ask you. Sure. Okay. Um, how about, uh, have we finished the discussion of financial controls, Harry? I don't think we even started it. I don't either. I, I don't think you started it. 
All right. Do you want to lead off? Um, I guess, yeah. I guess I can. Um, so, well, well, let me let me try <clears throat> to stage it. Would you like me to? Stay? Well, you put it on the agenda. Right. So why don't you start? Okay. Um, when I came to the uh, board of commissioners. Uh, after a while, it was discovered that um, th there were no financial controls whatsoever. One person could approve an expenditure, one person could sign the checks for that expenditure, and the bills were paid before any uh, oversight was applied. Is that a fair assessment? Well, from one of our previous meetings, <coughs> It was stated by the executive director that she approves the bills. Then the bills get paid. Then they come to our regular meeting and they're here on a warrant and we're supposed to approve them, but they've already been paid. So there's no oversight or Correct. control with respect to what, why even, why would we need to vote if they're being looked at, signed off on and then paid without any oversight from us. Correct. That's one of the items, okay? Um, so, and I know you don't want to hear this, <clears throat> but in my opinion, the last three years, all this thing about the management agreement, and the contract and everything, and then finally we get something signed by the DHCD last Wednesday on February 22nd, but there wasn't even an effort to get the two chairmen to sign it and then have the DHC sign it. So it, it, when I'm looking at this from a financial standpoint. It's not understanding. And here we go. Mm -hmm. Right. It's been explained. Sure. You know, Pamela, everything that you've given us in the past has been this management agreement here the first year, and we did have the appropriate signatures on it. That was but no DHCD because it got lost in snail mail. That did not get lost. The okay. 2021 got lost. Well, it, what, it got lost by got DHCD, lost. and she wrote it in the letter. Then we get she the three-year contract. This is the one you protest and proliferate that for the last number of months you've given us, us three or four times with no signatures. Because they were encumbered. All. Encumbered mm. documents. Fine. But now right. we have the DHCD. Signing this document, mm -hmm. but you couldn't even get the respective chairs to sign. Then the DHC signed. Would it. you like the email that says from no, Evelyn? I don't no, I know because you don't want the truth. You want to <coughs> pretend that there's something nefarious going on. If you don't think there is a valid contract, then I suggest you get a management agent or an ED in place as soon as possible because we're not going to work when there's this kind of 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 relationship back and forth. If it's not a valid contract, then find somebody to manage your housing authority. And these folks are then going to be upset. Oh yeah, very much so. We will be upset. I'm looking at this from a financial standpoint. The last no, handful housing of years, authority has been audited. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Said wait a minute. Shenanigans last time. And, and I'll say it again if you'd like. It's so because I don't we know. I don't know. And you're making know. our lives fearful of what we can are. happen down the road. We are. So yes. let me ask this question. When you've had your tenant meetings and we're being bad mouthed as new board commissioners are ruining the housing authority, which I find to be slanderous, libelous, what and what you are doing is bad mouthing You're going by gossip. Harry, so, you're going by you gossip. You're slandering. You don't Johnson. listen to anybody What's else, up? and shame on you for that. Okay. You're closed minded. You listen to two people in this entire complex. It isn't all of us. We are all here as a group to be represented, and we don't like what's going on with the board at all, and the fear you put into us by listening to two tenants only. All right, would, yeah. would you let what's me your ask you, what yeah. what's your interest here to make us live you. in wow. fear, <clears throat> to make us wow. our last years to be living in hell because you talk to two people here? What, what is That's it that the board has done that uh, irritates you so much? There's quite a few things. What well, would you start with? Let's not call the comment time. So let's not start we'll with the top three. We'll do the comment time. We will because uh, quite a few of us have. You don't know what you're saying. All right. 
This is our lives. This is where we live. Okay. That's right. Please. Please. They should so, identify themselves. So, I come. I come from an accounting background, and I worked for a municipality. And within that department, the departments would submit their bills. The department head would sign off. It would go to the accountant. The accountant would sign off. The checks would get cut. And then there would be a warrant, and the warrant is signed last. It's signed last. It's signed last. So it's typical. It is typical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Where did you work? If you don't mind my asking. Town of Amherst. Oh, okay. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Are you a tenant? <laughs> my mother does. Oh, okay. My mother. Right here. Exactly. Okay. Um, so I'm just saying it's typical. Just. So if everybody else had any question, it's typical for, right. for the warrant. But, but I'm, sh I'm sure you would agree with me. An expose. I'm sure you would agree. They're doing an investigation on I'm the last three years of what's been going on. Yeah, that'd be good. The, the last six months, let's say, since this guy was here. It's something that we're talking about. Would you be in favor if we had a, an inter, if we had an objective independent audit of the last four years of all the money? There, there's been control. two objective every single year. There's two audits. Please, yeah. please don't interrupt. He's slandering the housing authority. No, he's he not. most certainly I, is. I did not he slander most certainly anything. Is. He most certainly. Is. I think you better call an order and stick to the agenda and. All right. All right. Let me call the meeting back to order, please. All right. Um, authorized check signers. Oh, no. Uh, custody of records and funds. Harry? Well, are the minute books available? They are. In our office? They're in your office. Okay. They're in, in the fire safe. Okay. But I do need an appointment so that somebody can give them to me. That's or, correct. Yeah. Why is that? They're Be public records. There are records. Right, but public records always go through Freedom of Information, through the Freedom of Information Officer. It's me. So when I have a staff member sitting in there, maybe working with a tenant, maybe working with an applicant, maybe doing the rent rolls or letters, to have a commissioner just come in whenever they want and ask for information, one, they don't know where all that information is. That's not their job. That's in, not in the scope of their job. So if you, and when you asked for the appointment two weeks ago, we had two different appointments coming into this very room for the business of the housing authority, this housing authority, a tenant and an applicant. And we're supposed to stop that because a commissioner walks No, in. no, no, you explained that in an email right. to me. I was fine right. with that. Right, but that's the, but that, that can happen fine. at any time. Okay. Our, the housing authority is very busy. Harry, can you let people know how long you've been asking for those minutes? And they've been, and now. they've been available from day one. Would you, from day one, they're in the binder. They're in, and they're in the binder. John, you got to keep He does have them. Yeah, yeah. please, please address, address the chair, please. The employee in the office can never do anything for a tenant. It's not true. I experienced that this week. It's right. always I have to ask Pamela. I have to ask. And you Pamela. know why you have to ask me, Judy? I do. You do. Everybody gets the same. Thing. No, that's not true. Right? Yes. Okay. I do. Okay. You please. Do. Hey, wait a minute. You've got to. Well, thank you. In this meeting, you've got to address the chair, please. Okay. Um, um, just as a matter of information, are you the uh, the, the same? Uh, are you the custody the custodian of all the records in Amherst, Belchertown, and Hadley? That's correct. Okay. Um, it's not delegated. You're you're the one that's in charge. I'm the one. Yes. Okay. All right. I'll ask for but the, so those meeting minutes are here. Also, the um, if I may, the um, Harry had asked for the management agreement invoices. Those are here for him to look at. Okay. Uh, the, all that information is what, here. What did I? Ask? Okay. Um, the uh, invoices for the management <coughs> agreement, going all the way back to 2019. Are they here? They are here. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, I can look at those after this meeting. Yes, you can. Thank you. Thank you. Is also, there anything else? Mr. Chairman, can I offer to? So you were saying um, the custody of the of the finances too. Carrie did bring information because there was a question whether the um, the accounts were actually in the name of Hadley Housing Authority, like who held the account. 
and Carrie did bring actual statements for the board to look at too. To What's show. the answer? It's, it's they're absolutely in Hadley. They're required by law to be in Hadley. Okay. We don't have a regional. Um, this is not a regional housing authority. You are an independent autonomous okay. agency. Okay. So there's no commingling of funds. Never. Okay. Not it, allowed. Would it be possible for you to submit the bank statements uh, to us once a month, a copy? Sure. I mean that would be meaningful, and um, I, I would think. Would the board agree? That's a. Let's see how the treasurer wants to um, no, no. manage the records for the board. All right. <coughs> All right. It's, it's up to you then. Um, so I'm going to make a quick statement, Mr. Chair, if I may. Please. So the training for commissioners makes it very clear that our job is to be skeptical. They repeat that a, numer a number of times in the five units of the training. So that doesn't mean not to trust but it means to verify, not to sound like Ronald Reagan, but uh, so we don't want to get it. I mean, I'm sorry that the voices go up. I've never been on a commission where it's gotten so loud before or any kind of a board where it's gotten so loud before. So I want to apologize for that, but uh, it is our job to be careful and, um, and verify. And, you know, so if we sound like we're being too inquisitive or, or demanding sometime, Maybe that's a style problem more than anything else. So I think the treasurer understands, treasurer? Staff. Staff accountant understands. Pamela's showing a, a great deal of, of patience with all of us. Um, I, I've met Harry outside of a board, me out of the commission meetings in my whole life. I used to work with his wife. I've met him once outside of this room. <laughs> and uh, that was just to get acquainted and introduce ourselves to each other. John, I, have, I, have I seen you? I saw him once over the last two or three months outside of this room. So there's no great uh, good old boys thing. We don't drink together. We don't have coffee together. We don't talk about what we should do next. How about when you had the virtual meeting and you were at the senior center? It was you, Harry, John Allen. Jane Evans <clears throat> Smith was there, and a couple of the troublemakers down there were there. You were at the senior center. You had to be using Jane's computer. I watched the, the meeting, and all you guys were together, and you didn't come here. You know, you didn't get together with the other two. Therefore, all, at the last virtual meeting, you were at the senior center. Do you remember that? Yes, and I you do. You were all there. And, and if I could say this. A virtual meeting, by its very nature, Nurian, can be accessed by anyone from anywhere who has... I know that. I know that. I'm and and that's all I'm we did. All of us were together with the other the people here who have created a lot of problems. You're, you're unbiased because you're sticking up for them, but you got them at a virtual meeting sitting in with you guys? That's ridiculous. Why? Because it is. That's the one you violated the open meeting law when you went to talk to them after a meeting and she told you you were violating and you said, I'll talk to who I want. Yes, there's nothing to... Why didn't you call me? I would have gone. You didn't... Why didn't you call me? I would have gone. Why'd you take them? Okay. There was no... E you know, they, don't tell me that, John. We're not... Noreen, yesterday. Noreen, when I'm don't, sitting... Don't even, tell, don't even tell my name. We don't okay. have Wi-Fi in this room. If people, so you're not aware that we have no Wi-Fi. That's why people can't use their own computers or telephones down here. I don't know any other housing authority that doesn't have Wi-Fi. I mean, it's blocked here. I mean, that's why even when it's hybrid, we can't meet here. Because we can't, unless we have had the media here, we can't, many of us don't have the sophisticated equipment. So if you people were aware of more things that are happening here, instead of automatically deciding who the bad guy and the good guy is and who you're meeting with, try to get some knowledge about what's happening before you open your mouth. Okay. Knowledge is, your, is a friend. Okay, we have about a half an hour left or less. So I've got to keep the meeting going. I hope I don't <coughs> come across as being rude. They, yes, ma'am. We have it for 20 years. There's several of us that have been here for at least 20 years, some of them. And things are just entirely different now. We had the board. 
years. And speaking of Hadley boys, they were all Hadley boys, except for a few women that were on there, like the town nurse, and said such racist things. And I could, I never forget that she's a town nurse and moved south. That was a good place for her. But uh, things were so different then. I can't exactly. And it, for one thing. This lady down here that's having so much to say, I'm saying it about the three troublemakers. I'm one of them. The other two, I think, are here somewhere. We have names. We have names. We have names. No, we have names. We were always very active. And we always spoke out at the meetings. And you would not have no idea what we took from the board back then. Okay. But we had a chance at every meeting to they had a uh, yeah. schedule and we were always on <coughs> you'll have a chance too if we don't run out of time so I know, but I, I don't, maybe we should do public stuff know, first I, I don't feel that you get us, get us the the management. they're not well, management they're, they're board there's a separate between management <coughs> okay we, well, we, we, where was our board then right here this is management that's, this is it. that's the board okay. and they're just together we never had that thing Yes, we okay. Did. okay. Yeah. Listen, we, please. Where was I? I was at all we're, the meetings. We're not going to be able to get through the whole <laughs> agenda, including public comments, unless we keep it moving. Okay. Um, the the next issue is um, the uh, authorized check signers. Who right now? Who are the authorized check signers? I am one. You're okay. And are you actually physically signing them? I haven't one? signed yet, one yet. No. You haven't signed one yet. No. And are you are they have you authorized use of an electronic stamp? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Are you um, saying an authorized tenant signer? Check signer. Check signer. Check. Check. Okay. Um, I um, would like to hear if the board would prefer that we eliminate the automatic uh, electronic check signing and and revert to physical signing of the checks. What's the board's Pleasure on that, John. Harry. Panel got a question. So yeah. if I can, um, so not an explanation, but so there is a, um, a accounts payable policy that is very old in your binders. That's not is what being followed. When the pandemic hit, was when all the housing authorities went to auto automatic. So what maybe I could I suggest is that when you do you do some kind of subcommittee with including your new treasurer with the two other gentlemen to rewrite that policy to make the, the way that you approve and sign checks to come up with the exact policy for Hadley that will follow going forward. All right. I'm just asking right now what mm -hmm. the board's feeling is to uh, signing the checks mm -hmm. electronically or signing them in person. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all I'm asking okay. the board. So Harry. Um, or David, while he's looking. I don't at understand what the pros and cons of one or the other are. If uh, if we're all set up to sign checks electronically, that's fine with me. That's not the danger. The danger is approving the receipts and the warrants or whatever Correct. to make sure that before the check goes out, it's for the right amount. Correct. That we all agree on what the money's going to. I don't care if a machine signs the check or or Richie or anybody else. Is that that may not be what you're going for? No, I think I don't think checks are going out of this place that are inappropriately signed or uh, for the wrong amounts. Well, that, that would be too easy to it, discover. It, it's, <clears throat> there is no financial controls if somebody can take an electronic signature and apply it to a check. The electronic That's signatures were approved at the January 28th 21 meeting items not reasonably anticipated Pamela Rogers asked if the board is agreeable to having electronic signatures on the checks or accounts payable uh, at that same time we were removing uh, Mr. Dan Lico's signature from the account and adding uh, Richard Wittges's name to the account so that was voted on January 28th of 21. You're saying that was because of the pandemic? Because of the pandemic, Okay, yeah. so we could go back to regular two commissioners signing Absolutely. checks 
after they've been reviewed by whom? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Treasurer, subcommittee, whomever. Yep, we could do And the then they get paid and two commissioners would sign the signature. Correct. So we would do the internal controls that the housing authority does. Okay. And so then bring them to the board for physical signatures. Fine. So I will make a motion that we re uh, track the electronic signatures, go back to two commissioners signing the checks who have signature authorization after the invoices and bills have been reviewed and then they get paid. Uh, but reviewed by the board or just reviewed by internally? By I would think you want to by, by the, the board. board. Yes. Because you're asking us every month to Correct. vote for them. We have not seen them. I'd like to see them. Understood. Yep. Thank you. Well, we see them. So that's my motion. Before you go anywhere else, you can have the discussion. There, I'd is, like to second. Is there a second, the please? Because that was done primarily for the pandemic. Yeah. All right. Correct? Is there a second? Yes, that's correct. I'll second with a friendly amendment. Will you entertain a we'll friendly amendment? Just second it. Can we'll have a clarification okay. of the motion, please? Okay. Second. And what's the motion? Uh, or it's a clarification. Well, wait a minute. Let's approve the, uh, we've got a first and a second on a motion, but on what we're asking. Well, the motion is to remove the electronic signatures that were voted back in 2021 due to the pandemic. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No. I, I didn't hear that. Uh, in favor of removing the electronic signatures and making it yeah, because they were put in place primarily because of the right. pandemic. Right. Prior to that, the commissioner signed the checks. That's correct. Yeah, so I don't know why we can't go back to that. That's yeah. my motion. Yeah. But I think just I think David just wanted to clarify. So we'll, I, we'll, we'll get to that after uh, I get a, a, a vote. But you, so you have a first and a second we can and then amend discussion. It. We can amend it. What is the motion? Because I'm here conflicting. Facts. The motion is to remove the electronic signature procedure that was established. Back due to when, the pandemic because it's no longer necessary right. okay i've got a first and i've got a second all in favor no no yes well i vote yes yes okay but i'm just curious why the no vote because we, we, this was let, let me okay. let me all declare right. the vote and then you can ask uh, um so that motion carries you We're, haven't voted Yes, I did. Oh, you did? Yes. How did you vote? I voted yes. Oh, thank you. All right, now, would you explain the no votes, please? I, I don't need to explain my vote. Okay. I don't see there's a problem with electronic okay. signature. All right, there's your answer. So my question is before we're asked, <laughs> let me sneak my question in. Maybe it's the same thing. You still approve them before we are asked to sign them, right? But we don't see them. We don't see I them. thought they don't come to us until the stack of receipts has been reviewed by you and you initial with a cover sheet saying these are all legitimate expenses. Please write the check, right? No, they pay the bills before we even see them. Just Carrie, Carrie, just adjust the chair and I'll recognize you. I, I'm sorry, may I speak? Yes, you, please, Carrie, you, so, have the, you have the floor. So um, what I'm hearing, please correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, what I'm hearing is to we will go through our process of approving the invoices and getting prepared for you i will bring them to somebody once a month you will review them sign them individually by hand and then we'll mail them out mm -hmm. yes so my concerns are if you're paying first of all we don't regularly have there are times when we don't have meetings every month um, and if we're paying invoices every 30 days they are going to be late and they are going to be assessed late fees, which is not good for us. It's not good for the tenants. We're spending a lot of money that's not necessary. May, may I, please? Um, the way I, we currently do accounts payable is we do it every other week. Every other week I pay everything I have for the housing authority. Um, it goes through the proper channels. Um, it's approved, the checks are written, the checks get mailed out every 14 days, every Thursday. Back in the day before COVID, whatever, um, you said it was in 21, we would present the checks. It was very difficult to get two commissioners together at the same time to sign the checks. It was a lot of running around. We would be running to their person's house, um, meeting here. It was just, it was hectic. And it was a delay in getting the payments out. That's why 
with COVID also, because we weren't having in-person meetings, that's why we suggested that, you know, if we had electronic signatures, it would be much easier, not only for the commissioners, but for the housing authorities and the t to get the invoices paid. I'm just saying that I understand that you want to go back to the way it was, but going back to the way it was isn't beneficial. Okay, and Carrie, payments are Carrie would, it be, would it satisfy your <laughs> concerns if uh, two, two signatories stopped in twice a month to sign the current bills? It's fine with me. That would, but that I would, would prefer every other week, not once a month. I can have the everything that's, we'll, set we'll make you. it. You guys okay with it? Well, I was going to ask what we could do to make this work because yes. we have almost 400 and some odd thousand dollars that we are responsible for as a commission, as a housing authority. There's tenant rents and there's state taxpayer dollars that come from the DHCD as subsidies. That's a lot of money. And I want a comfort level that when we get this warrant and we're told that we have to approve this and it's already been paid, then there is no oversight from my, there's no reason for us to vote. That's why I've taken the position, I'm not voting on it because I haven't seen these. And we're talking about a lot of money. We're talking about tenant money, and as I said, state taxpayer money. And over the last three years, that's almost one and a half million dollars that I have no knowledge of anything. All right, so your concerns are met and Carrie's concerns are met, I believe. Is that There's correct? a way to you work this out for us, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Chair? Yes. Can I say something? Um, just to add to the experience, um, so, one of the entities for the town of Amherst, they wouldn't send the checks out to the warrant to sign, but this, the checks were all signed electronically. So all the processing was done through accounts payable. The checks sat there with the warrant, and then once the warrant was signed by the commission or the committee, then the checks were mailed. But you didn't have to sit there and sign every single one of those checks. Okay. They were signed electronically. Thank you for your comments. These guys don't mind doing it. Okay. Okay. That's that's the way it should work. It's yeah. Okay, but it hasn't worked for us here. So, can, can I just suggest, um, just add to so with her experience from Amherst, Kristen also worked for, in accounting in Northampton for the town of Northampton. So Kristen was the one that had helped come up with this as well. Kristen was giving the same information. But okay. if I can just point out just two, so, so the book that Carrie has there today too, Carrie, can you just hold up the book? <clears throat> so that's what going forward with the process, and, uh, and quite frankly, I think we should go back to this process so that there, you do be, have a level of comfort, is that those, the invoices with the checks would be put, placed in that book, and then the warrant is on top, so that you're making sure, that's how the commissioners used to do it, they would match the warrant to the invoice. And, and if that's what's going to give a level of comfort, then that's, that's the what we so The prior commission did that. Yes. Yes, yes. In, in all three of our housing authorities. And because of the pandemic, we went to this. Right. right. So that's we what can go back. We're just reverting back. To Absolutely. It. Okay, and I think, I think everybody's happy. Are you happy, Carrie? I, I'm just here to do what you would like. Well, <laughs> and I, your, I objection, get the your objection paid. has been met. True or false? Yes. Yeah. Harry? Yes. David? Yeah, I hope so. Okay. Lisa? Uh, we were voting on uh, whether or not to have electronic signatures. I still think electronic signatures are smart. And what Carrie said, what Teresa said, makes sense to me. Okay. I agree. We're, it's we're, electronic. Okay. Well, it's three in favor of reverting back to the original way. Okay? So the motion yeah. carries to go back to what the way it used to be. We can always, we can always re-revert re if we have to. All right. What electronic signature are you using? Uh, Whose signature is mine it? and Richard's? But at he, this point. but he doesn't know it's being used. No, he does. He he does, he does know it's being. Yeah. He filled out all the paperwork. Okay. Yeah. Is this it, a, a stamp? Do executive directors at other housing authorities have signature authority on bo of the board they do. responsibilities? Yes. Yeah. So as the executive director, by, by guidelines, I'm your chief executive officer, I'm your chief financial officer, I'm your freedom of information. With, uh, housing authority EDs wear a lot of hats. 
I prefer not to be a signer, but we, because we only have one signer on right now, that's why I am the signer. When we have multiple board members, I, there's no need for me to sign. Well, I don't need to be a signer. I just need to, I just would like to review what we're being asked to vote. Understood. Yeah. To pay. Absolutely. That's all I'm asking. But, but having said that, I, I'm not sure, Mr. Chairman, if you're going on, that we do need to get signers. Because oh, we do. I understand that. Okay, so just, okay. And, and I would like to have two signers. Everybody should be a signer, right? We do usually have everyone as a signer, and you may not use everyone, but God forbid something happens. I understand. Okay. Each check should be signed by two commissioners. It has to be, yeah, if there are two check systems. Okay. Right. And our, our checks do require two signatures. Correct. Is that correct? Right. Okay. But if you only have two signatures and something happens to one of the people, we can't We'll use have that more check. than two. Thank you. Okay. All right. There's four of them. All right. Moving ahead. Uh, is that all I'm set? Okay. I want to review. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we still have to have a mechanism I, I, I got it. of financial control. I got it. All right. Um, all right. So, Commissioner's duties. Um, I don't know if we want to spend much time on that. We only have about 15 minutes yeah. left. I don't know Should we pass that ahead? Pass that we to the next meeting? We have to get the public comments. Yes. Yeah. Chair. Just a second. A lot of people want to speak to us. Yes. And Carrie's asking. Okay, so I'm going to move. Mr. Chairman. Just a minute. I'm going to move everything uh, forward except the uh, public comments. How's that? All right. We'll just move it to the next meeting. What are you saying? Mr. Chairman. Just, uh, we want to clarify. Is there a misunderstanding? Okay, I'm going to. In the interest of reserving some time for public comments from you folks, yes. I'm going to take all the rest of the agenda and move it ahead to the following meeting, okay? Passing over. We're going to pass over. No, no, he's, mo he's moving the items prior in front so that there will be time for public comments. That's what he's saying. Yes. Sorry. I'm just closer and they might be able to hear me. Okay. Yeah, Risa. Yes, uh, we just voted, you know, the quorum there to my right, just voted uh, to not use electronic signatures anymore. Uh, there will be no bills can be paid until this body votes on who can be the check signers. Okay. And that has to be determined now. That's a voting issue now. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I thought all five of us are going to be signatures. Except for Harry doesn't want. So no, if you just I'm make just a motion. I want to review. I want to review. I don't need to sign. I want to review, see what we're paying, and you sign the checks. To have four All right, so we d we'll need to have at least four. Richard, you, you don't mind signing? If you need to see me out. once a week, huh? I'll just come once a week. Don't sign it. Show me what you want to show me, and I'm, I'm done. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to skip the items. We're going to pass over the items on the agenda. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I'm Except we for have, We have to have a vote on that. You have to make a vote that there'll be the four of you will be signers. All right, please. Is there is there a motion to have us four people of the commissioners be sure. signers? I'll sign. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excuse and excuse me. I'm sorry. We do. We also need a vote to remove Kristen. Carrie. Well, got let's course. deal with the motion that's on the table, and then we'll vote. To but we're talking about authorized. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Do you understand? I do. Okay. So, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Harry? Aye. Aye. Okay. Teresa? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's unanimous. Now, a vo uh, is there a motion to remove um, Kristen from the checking account? I thought it was already done. No, they won't do it without a board vote. All right. I move we remove the former treasurer, Kristen, from the checking account. Is there a second? Second. second. Richie can say. That's fine. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That's Thank unanimous. You. All right, now we're going to move to the public comments. One at a time. One at a time. Uh, let's start. We'll just go this way. Go ahead. Judy. I'll wait for the microphone, please. We're going to pass the microphone to whoever starts first and then go. Right. Could you remind us that we have to say their name and that they live at Golden Court? It, uh, and it would be helpful if you could identify yourself. Hi, Sue Oppenheimer, Golden Court. 
I just wanted to bring up a, like three or four things quickly. What is every meeting we brought up the fact that we have no Wi-Fi in here, and the months go by, no Wi-Fi. And I'm just curious to know why our bylaws and this uh, housing authority haven't been updated for 42 years. I wanted to also speak about tenant meetings. I've been to tenant meetings lately where uh, management and tenants have been able to badmouth other tenants and management, badmouth board members where they're allowed to do that and nobody is stopping this from happening and it, at all. So when people, especially when you, people specifically, there's some people in here today that don't even know the people you're calling the trouble. I, I don't know you. You only know what you hear from down that end. I've had no association with you other than the fact that you live here. And we don't appreciate being called troublemakers because we work very oh. hard to make this housing authority a better housing authority. So, so would you please address the chair, not individual? Well, she addressed the troublemakers, what, so I well, was just getting She made a mistake. Her. She should have just addressed Anyway. Well, you know who the troublemakers were? Right? Well, you'd have no idea who we are, 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 so I'm just saying. One Marie? more thing is I wanted to say that I attended a memorial service in Belchertown the other day for a tenant that for a tenant that passed away due to the fact that he was given an eviction. And I really think we have to investigate the uh, the amount of evictions and okay. notices to quit and threats of notices okay. to quit that wait, are happening here. Wait a minute. Here. I think I think Sue, if you don't mind, we should just address the issues that pertain to the. Well, it has to do with us because we gave, we went there because we're managed so-called managed by the same housing authority. So well, if we're all under the same umbrella, but it we wanted to give our condolences to the. It to does this, not uh, come under the purview of this particular board. Thank you. Right. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Judy? My name is Judy Roncalli. I know what it is. That's my name. If you want to address me, address me as my name. Oh, Not a troublemaker. You're the troublemaker? No. no. I'm Judy Roncalli. Noreen. Noreen. Go ahead, Judy. So rude. Oh, my oh. issue is the oh, late... Okay. Who, who's who's speaking? Maybe you ought to leave since you're wait, disrupting, wait, 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 disrupting the meeting. Wait, wait a minute. You know I mean, you've got to. You've got to. You used to be a, a selectman. You know, you've got to maintain control of the meeting, right? Me? Yeah. I never would do that. You never would control the meeting. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Judy. <laughs> My issue, my problem is the <clears throat> late fees that are being attached to my rent. I will start with, I have never been late with my rent. <coughs> and yet, I'm being charged over $200 in late fees. I've been to the bank three times. I've spoken with people who know about money and Ms. Mary down there is attaching a late fee to my rental. Late fee on top or late fee on top of late fee. This is totally inappropriate. The late fees are being put up. My rent gets paid every month by my bank by the third, or if it's a holiday, then it comes through on the fourth of the, of the month. I've never been late, and yet I have these late fees I have never received a call, a, a, a courtesy call you called it at the last meeting. No such thing. Okay, Judy, can I suggest that we have our financial subcommittee investigate your issue? What are you shaking your head because for? Because that's the day-to-day -day operations of the housing authority. We can't get involved in that. We can investigate it. Excuse me, you actually can't, right? You actually can't. You can't. You can't. Excuse me. So at the who meeting, is? At who the is last, going at to? At the last meeting, you said that I could talk about your case. Can I talk about your case? You, you, you don't have, have to, to Pamela. Pamela. Excuse me. Excuse Pamela. me. Excuse Pamela. me. Pamela. You don't have to. I will say this. Uh, I think it's very concerning about late fees, Judy. <clears throat> Anybody who gets a late fee would be very upset about it. So I understand your concerns. However, I also understand 
that housing court records are a matter of public record. And before you say even one more thing, realize that anyone in this room can look at the public records available for housing court. It would not be a violation of your confidentiality. It's a matter of public record. Now, knowing about your housing court file being a matter of public record, do you really want to stand there and say you have never been late on rent before? Yes, I do. Okay. And right. why would you have right. any, Just, any knowledge of my rent? Right. It's public record. Risa? Why, would you be <laughs> why are you looking at my public record? Ju Judy, Judy, all, all my suggestion was... <clears throat> All right, we've only got uh, like nine minutes left. All I suggested was that as a matter of policy, not day-to-day -day operations, but policy, the board look at the late fee procedures. It's in the rent collection policy that you did a subcommittee for. Okay. <coughs> so, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Mr. Chairman. Please. Could you just please give us one example where the rent was due on the first, because you said you've been to the bank, when the bank paid it, and when you got the late fee? Because at the last meeting, Mary said, late fees are applied on the first of the month. Example, if on February 1, the tenant owes rent for January, then a late fee would be applied. I did ask, was there consideration for when Social Security checks come in and get deposited or pension <coughs> checks from late husbands or whatever the deal is? Can you just give me one example on your bank record when the rent was due, when it was paid, and then I've got some questions for Mary on this issue. Please, just one example. And I think I can resolve this tenant late fee thing once and for all here. <coughs> On the top, it's the most recent. <coughs> Judy. This came from the bank. Yeah. Where is your record with the housing authority where the late fees are being charged? They're all there. Well, we shouldn't take too much time. Yeah. I'm going to take two minutes, please. I'd like two minutes. I'll go quick. All right. Is this it? That's one of them. Okay. That's not from the bank, though. That's from Happy House. All right. Here's an example. And then I'm going to make a motion. November 1st, the rent is due. November 4th, the rent was paid. December 1, rent is due, but December 1, there's a late fee. If what you said at the last meeting, that the late fees are applied the subsequent month for the previous month, so November 1st, it's due, November 4th, it got paid, December 1, you've attached a late fee of $25. How does that happen when November's rent was paid? Was there a balance? The balance has been paid. There's a balance of... Uh, $4.70. Yes, I, something like that. But I, I, I'm just asking, I'm asking from your procedure that you outlined, that you said if the rent is due on the 1st and is not paid, that the following month on the 1st you attach a late fee. So I don't understand why the late fee is when the November payment was paid November 4th. Do. How does the balance have anything to do with the rent that's due? Because it's so late rent. That's due. It's late rent. There's a balance that's due. Yeah. Okay, we have six discuss. minutes We're left. We're not going to discuss another tenant at a meeting. I'm sorry about that. You're perfectly willing. I'm perfectly willing to have you talk about me. All right. You're letting her talk about me. No, we're talking about All right. the Let, late phase. Let's move on to the next comment, please. And I, think I would like to make a motion, <coughs> Go ahead. and you can take it up at the next meeting, but I make a motion that this entire rent late payment gets looked at because it's not making sense in the prior meeting 
what was explained to me, and even if there is an outstanding balance of four dollars, does that really promulgate twenty-five dollar late fee on a current rent? I don't think so. Okay, and who would you like to look at that? It's in the rent collection policy that you folks just voted to have. No, I'm asking him, please. I, I understand, but again, the house, this right. is day-to-day -day operations, and the housing authority this is, is dealing with this. We're, we're, and this is a legal matter. We're dealing folks with. Are, oh, you're, you're we're dealing with policy. This is not policy. This is a right. tenant's account. All right. This is a tenant's account. Any other I comments from tenants? Thank you very much. Are there any other comments? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm Bill Sadbolski, and I've been here over 10 years. Hi, Bill. And quite a couple years ago, about a year ago, the blinds on my front room broke. And I went for, I don't know how many weeks living with that because at that time, Jack Yusko was on the board, and I, I had put in a request for new blinds. And I was told that that wasn't going to happen because the housing authority was putting in new windows. But yet, unannounced and everything else, lo and behold, right after that, maintenance showed up with a new set of blinds. And my question is, is all the years I've been here, the board, all the boards that have been here keep telling me that they're going to have all these different improvements at, and the housing authority, you know, and, and housing, having housing. housing. Um, the, they were saying they were going to put in new new storm doors, um, new on the front on our front doors. The step was that are wearing out. Those are going to be replaced, and that was three or four years ago. And my question is, every time it was brought up, the board says, "Well, we don't have the money." Or we need to get this approved, did that approved? Literally, this housing authority, the buildings are falling apart. You know, the front doors. Okay. Uh, it sounds to me, sir, that we ought to have that as a, an agenda item for a future meeting. It's more than we can handle. Well, I wish it would, because, like I said, even now, okay. if you look behind me, uh, how would what the would wall it, next to the refrigerator is falling apart. Okay. What would we call it? If we were to bring it up as a maintenance. 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 Routine maintenance. Okay, and I uh, have one other question. Have you spoken with the um, the people in charge of maintenance? Yeah, they, they told me they'll they don't you know, there's no money for this or there's no, no okay. money for that. Um, my front door. 
Okay. It's starting to fall apart. Okay. And we'll, all they did was repaint it. We'll see if we can get uh, our handle on that for the next meeting, okay? Is, are there any other comments? Yes. Emory Parker, Golden Court. There are not enough words to describe how angry I am at this point in time about this whole business. Wait, this, this whole business this, is... The whole business of going up breaking the contract or leaving the contract, the alleged contract, according to late reasons, to we should stay with Amherst. Amherst gives us more resources. And I don't understand why you want to, to go back to just Hadley. This board... And Sue, as far as not knowing just, who you are wait a minute. and what I'm doing... P please say. address the chair. Adjust the chair, not, not... Okay, at the, I happened to watch the last Board of Selectmen meeting, and Sue had a long essay about... Excuse me, about you, Wait a minute, Henry. Wait, they're talking over there, they need to stop. <laughs> Sue had a long... No, no, just wait. She had a long dissertation or essay or whatever, about getting rid of a board member. And she went on to describe this person and misrepresented and was, okay. did not tell the truth. So that's how I know who she is and what she does. And that's why I okay. don't want us to leave If him. there was a conversation at the Board of Selectmen's meeting about one of our commissioners, that's not the business of this board. The business That's of this number one. Number two, this board has never taken up the issue of replacing Amherst Housing Authority. It's, it's a possibility, and it's always a possibility, but it has never voted to do that. Okay. So, possibility, as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't want to consider it. You, you what? I don't want you to consider it. Okay. Well, we haven't considered it, so you can well, relax. It's kind of the, the word on the street. Well, oh, anyway. I'm glad you address, I'm glad you addressed the board. It has not come before the board, and and I would ask that if the board is ashamed of Golden Court or public housing, or think that their kids should provide other housing for them, I question that person's ability to be objective on this board. Yep because you do have a fiduciary duty yeah. to us. And that means that you think about us and what we need. And we need to have more authority behind our management system. Yes, and let me comment on that. The way housing authorities are supposed to work, and this would directly address your concerns, would be to, for the tenants to get together and have a tenants organization. That way you would have clout to, uh, you, don't, well you're shaking your head, but you haven't, I'm, I haven't finished. I know what you're gonna say. It's my understanding that these tenant meetings in the past have been very disruptive. Yep. Nobody wants to come, nobody can come. And I, I'm appalled that here when schools and everything are closed, you still have this meeting today. Okay. Yeah, okay. we got here. But attendance meeting is not going to do it. Okay. Attendance meeting, we don't have the clock. Okay. All I'm telling you is that based on the information I get from DHCD and other housing authorities, a tenants organization would be beneficial to all of you because that tenants organization has official capacity to address the board as opposed to individual people. It would have real clout if the tenants organization voted to do something. That would, for example, <coughs> maintenance. It would really help if, if you could get together and vote uh, recommendations to the board, okay? For example, okay, well, like uh, Bill, uh, uh, issue with uh, if maintenance is getting done quickly enough or whatever we're not supposed to touch day-to-day -to -day operations right we can only talk about policies you guys if you can get together and just remain polite for an hour or two with each other could talk about 
what issues you'd like to bring to management. And if management can't solve them, then maybe they become a policy issue or something. It would really be in your own interest to look over your differences and your angers and get together. On, you know, on one level, you're a family here. You're a community. And you've got to learn how to be polite with each other and civil with each other. And, I'm 79 uh, and talk. years old. I don't need to learn how to get along with other people. May, may I that, do you, that get may along, be true. basically, but I say what I think, or I try to. Yeah. I disagree that a tenant's organization will be helpful for this at this particular time with this particular population. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the... Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hi, I'm Tracy and you're Riley. I'm in number six over here in Golden Court. Nice so to meet you. Of, nice to meet you, too. There are a lot of elderly folks here. There's disabled, also mentally disabled. You have a big array of a lot of different folks. But I can tell you, as far as management goes, I mean, as far as, like, maintenance, I see Ricardo running across my place. Miss Helen's toilet was running water. You were wasting hundreds of gallons a day. I call on Ricardo. He's working on another unit. I said, Ricardo, please, can you come over and help me? He went over, and with 30 minutes, he fixed her toilet so we didn't have to pay for hundreds and hundreds of gallons of water leaking out. I tell you, Amherst sends the maintenance people here, and some days there's three or four of them. And all you have to do is ask. You don't even have to write something down, and they'll help you out. So people who are complaining about management, they're complaining because, oh, the other management would install all these things in their apartment that aren't housing. So what I'm saying is people are picking on entities within management that shouldn't be picked on, or they're just looking at one person or two people instead of the whole. And that's what really ticks me off, is the board members, it comes back to us, that they are only speaking to a couple people and getting their opinion. You want opinions, you speak to this whole room and you'll get opinions because guess what? The reason why all these people are here, because like I said earlier, they're scared to death what happened in the past. You, sir, at the end, you go back and read the minutes and the fear and the words that came out of people's mouths towards all the other tenants. You'll be surprised. Okay. They don't want things to do with the board because they're not gonna form an organization. I've tried, but they're not going to because of the fear of the last tenants organization. And you can read the minutes on who was involved in that, sir. Okay. And I wish you would before you all of a sudden make an opinion on something before you gather all your facts. Sir? That's, no, ma'am, I'm Tracy. Ma'am, I'm sorry. No, see, that's the other thing, sir. You guys, you don't listen to us. You truly need to listen to us. This is where we live our lives. Amherst Management has helped us. Granted, there are bumps in the road. Every organization has bumps in the road. But they have helped us. And when we have gone up and asked, Mary Billion right there, she'll call, she'll call Bob. Bob Kayo is 91 years old. He's not coming here because of what he has bit, bit put through by Sue and Judy Rincali. So, so so what I'm saying is, please, I would like the board to get all the minutes from the past when their organization was formed. Because the fear, there's never going to be an organization here. How dare you speak for See? something that's not here? How dare you? Excuse me. I know, because you have you put the no fear in me. Okay. You have. You, you did not even leave our door in our chair. The bat, just because we have the same rights to you. You're not grandfathered into the same rules. Come on, guys. Come on. I want to say one thing. I think I should be able to. You weren't even living there when we had a tenants organization. Sue, I'm talking recently since I've been here. You okay. Tend, okay. Your attitude and you throwing stuff at people. Stop. 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 You're okay. People. Throwing stuff yes. at people. You throwing stuff Crazy. at people and like abusing people, people and Crazy. assaulting people. Crazy. What? Okay. Tracy, oh, you're assaulting people okay. right now. I, I'm, I'm, what are I, you talking about? Okay. Yeah, I know. Stand up and tell me what you're talking I, I about. I witnessed when you were throwing things Judy. Donnie. Oh, uh, Donnie. Wait, wait. Throw things at you. Just a minute, just a minute. This is not yeah. the place for this type of no, discussion. She's she's so not going to be in an organization. This is what you get. Our organization is over okay. eight years ago, okay. and they're still talking about. It. They weren't even living here any of these. I'm going to give a commissioner's 
I'm going to give the commissioners a chance to have the last word, right. and then we're going to adjourn. Uh, any any comments? Well, I just uh, want to say that four of us up here are new to this whole thing. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to look at prior minutes. I did see some minutes on certain items, but yeah, I want to get a flavor for what went on before. But we have four new commissioners from Reese right down to the guy on the end, okay, the guy on the end. I want to say to Pamela, apologies for earlier on in the meeting when we started. I had some anxious moments. We had a little exchange. Difference of opinion on the contract, we can agree to disagree. But I apologize if I did anything to offend because that's not my intent on this board. My good friend Richard asked me to join this board because I have financial background and expertise in budgets and numbers and all, all that stuff. I currently also sit on the Hampshire County Pension Board. Amherst is a member of that, okay? So, and I'm serving out my term there where my career began when I was the county treasurer. So I wanted to say that to Pamela. Appreciate it. All right. Please be patient with the four of us new people. Richard, uh, uh, he's been on this board, okay? And he's the one that asked me to join this board. And I'm happy in one respect because I think there are a lot of moving parts here, but we have to have some time and some patience to get to everything. And we are going to try to do the right thing. I'm not here to cause problems and make enemies all over the valley. That's, that's not why I'm here. Thank, thank you. Thank you. David, uh, last word. Well, I heard one good thing here, I think, which is Tracy's saying that uh, uh, maintenance got done quickly when it was asked for. So yeah. that makes me feel good. Right, right. And the other hand, just a second. Just come on, guys. Okay, Judy, that's okay. operational stuff that I'm not going to comment on, okay? I know, Thursdays, right? Okay, Bill please. said that he's having... So, so just, just a second. I want to just finish by saying, Bill, you said that um, improvements, which is a little different than maintenance in most cases, might take more time, right? Like getting a front uh, step repaired or... Um, the blinds sounds like you got lucky because the windows are being replaced. But it's not board business. So it's a balance for the management to get maintenance done and repair bigger projects and all that. So we all have to be patient, I think. Um, if it's an emergency, like a toilet running and water being wasted, well, that's something that should be handled immediately. The Native if, American woman here was denied the blinds that when he put in. He, she was not given it. He was. Okay. So they uh, picked and chose. Okay, that's between you and man. I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah, give me one more minute. So we all have to be patient with the bigger project. I, as a board member, are very interest, very interested in, in uh, long-term improvements, whether it's uh, physical things like doorsteps and windows or uh, landscaping, bigger projects. So that's sort of why I joined, is just to make Golden Court a much better and better place for everyone to live. I may end up here someday. I don't know. So um, if maintenance stuff is pretty much getting there done are well. Vacancies. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of vacancies. So, so the last ahead. thing I want to say is um, it it's an operational thing, is if we have four open units or more right now, that sounds like a lot. So future discussion will be, are we filling our vacancies quickly? All right. All right. All right. Risa? Last word. All done? Richard? No, oh, Lee. Oh, jump in. I've heard all this before for quite a while. <laughs> you don't want to jump in? No more comments. He's a winner now. You're not going to take the He's bait, huh? No. <laughs> all right, the beat. I will say one thing. All right. Thank you, Richard, for reminding me. So I will say this to the other three new board members. You have a resource on this board called your tenant representative. I have lived here well over five years. You can come to me and I can give you the background and the history in a fair and unbiased manner. But nobody has. I've so sat with you for an hour you, and a half the other day. you sat with me for an hour and a half. Yep. But I don't think you're, I don't think any of you have really, you know, Ask me. Well, like, what's going on okay. right here in the public how, meeting? How would you know? You never talked to us. Okay. How would you know? Are you, you would have a biased view anyway. Yeah. What was going on? The, the, the meeting, yes. Like we just need the next meeting.
quickly. Yeah. The next meeting yeah. date? Yes. Yeah. All right. The next meeting date is when? Who's going to suggest the last it? Tuesday of the month. So last the Tuesday. Of so the 28th, we are actually being audited. Um, oh, okay. So, and I expect that she'll be here until at least 1 o'clock. Is it possible to do it at 1? No. As I know you have other commitments. Could we go to a different day then? We might have to. Huh? What's the following day? The following day is the 29th. It's Wednesday. 329. Or Monday the 27th. Uh, Monday the 27th is the Amherst Housing Authority Board. Okay, okay. so we have to do... 329. That'd be a Wednesday. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. Say it again now. Wednesday, March 29th. At 11. At 11? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All set? Anything else? The meeting stands adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you, John. You're welcome. All right.